I feel like if this arc were a movie, this chapter would be the moment where the epic music starts kicking in. Dun 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 dun. Hockey up. Vroom, vroom. Let's go. The most disappointing part about this chapter was, in my opinion, the cover page because aside from learning that the Tontata ship is called the Usoland, Usolando, Usoland, we don't really get much more info. In fact, it's kind of like a repetition of last week's cover page. Although we do get to see some Tontadas there in the water. Personally, I hope some of them are drowning. Not to be mean, but fingers crossed that some of them are actually, you know, I'm just, I'm just playing around. But really, I want them to drown. This chapter made me think a lot about Uruj and a quote that he has back in Sabodi Archipelago when he sees Zoro for the first time and Zoro is about to slice a Tenryu Vito. Uruj basically says the following. He looks at Zoro and says, You know that Roronoa guy doesn't seem like the type to take orders. So if he's number two, I wonder what that means about the captain. That says something about whoever, whoever his captain is. So I'm essentially applying the same logic from that observation to this chapter with Katakuri and Big Mom. To the point where this chapter got me to think like, what is it about Big Mom? What is so amazing, what is so special about Big Mom that she herself is capable of having somebody like Katakuri be her number two? And yes, I know that, you know, he's technically related to her, he's her son, but at the same time, it's like, I wonder if there's something else, you know, that is keeping Katakuri so loyal in this situation because he's such an honorable dude to the point where he actually confronts and yells at his own sibling because he thought the fight wasn't going fair enough. We open up and see that Katakuri did indeed land the hit from the previous chapter on Luffy's side. I mean, it seems pretty bad. There's a lot, there's a lot of damage there on his side. He can't even get up in the beginning. Flampe is just laughing, laughing her butt off, her, her floating butt off. How is she flying, by the way? Does anybody like know? How, how is she able to levitate like that? I don't know, is that like a devil fruit ability that she has? Whatever, the other uh, henchmen are also laughing, but Katakuri senses that something is wrong. It's like, you know, that hit should not have la I don't think, you know, you've been dodging shots, Luffy. Luffy's been dodging all over the place because Luffy's base durability and base dodging ability are godly, all right? That's been confirmed by this fight over and over again. Just, just godly, godly stats. So Katakuri kicks Luffy, sends him back, but before that, Luffy clearly blocks with armament hockey, and I think that in that moment, Luffy's actually using future observation because how else would he be able to know that a kick was coming? I mean, maybe he just knew instinctively to block the kick, I guess, but still, it seems like very specific, but maybe he saw that he wouldn't be able to move in time to dodge the kick, so that's why he activated the the sort of like armament cross that he uses with his arms. Luffy sent flying back, Katakuri comes in with a trident to try and land a hit, trying to pin Luffy down, but Luffy does a backflip and dodges that, but then he falls into Katakuri's trap in a way because he has a donut in midair, you know, the awakening, the mochi awakening, and he basically just buries Luffy with it. The attack is actually called Kinchaku Mochi. I looked it up in real life. It actually looks like this. It's like mochi inside of a little bag, which makes poetic sense because Luffy is literally getting body bagged by the attack. So Luffy gets buried there, and then we have one of those magical, magical flashbacks of insight back to his training days with Rayleigh when they were in the jungle. You can tell he's barely learning how to use observation hockey in this, and I guess this goes back to why Luffy's base dodging ability is so good. You know, if this is how he trained with Rayleigh, it, it makes sense. I mean, Luffy has a stack of bumps on his head already, so it was, it was the school of hard knocks. Anyway, Rayleigh tells him, don't think, just feel. You have to learn how to sense these movements unconsciously. As most of you know, I usually don't read the comments out loud, but I feel like it's, it's merited in this case because I think Mr. Artistic AJ hit the nail on the head when he said, Luffy about to unlock Ultra Instinct before Vegeta in this chapter. <laughs> <laughs> this this deserves more likes, <laughs> like a lot more likes. <laughs> I feel like every time we get a flashback to one of the Straw Hats previous masters that they had during the time skip, it, it should prep us, it should get us ready for something new. Like I remember back in Dress Rosa, where Zoro essentially had like a mini flashback to Mihawk. So, and in this case, it's Luffy to Rayleigh. So every time we see Rayleigh, like get ready for something new. So Flampe tries to shoot at Luffy again, but this time he dodges it. And you can tell he's like barely like, you know, even thinking about it, like his eyes are basically closed. So he's like 
but then he dodges and then he falls flat on the ground. And this kind of goes back to a point that I've been making pretty much throughout this entire fight, which is there are certain moments in this fight where like Katakuri essentially has Luffy on his back, all right, on the floor, and Katakuri does not finish the job. So maybe that, I don't know if that's, again, that's the honorable side of him. It could be, right? That it's like, I'm not going to finish you off if you're there. I don't know what's going on. But he decides to go and confront Flambe about her interference in the match. I mean, because in all honesty, Luffy is struggling to get up after that hit. You literally see his like his legs wobble, like Flambe was saying. It's actually a very accurate but mean uh, depiction, comparison that she makes with like a newborn fawn. So I guess that's like one of Flambe's quirks that, you know, she makes these very accurate comparisons to animals and uses them as insults. Uh, by the way, was I the only one who thought it was a little bit weird that she was gushing over Katakuri the way that she was? I mean, she even gets the hard eyes and stuff for Katakuri. Also, I'm just going to put this out there. I definitely think that if we do not see Flampe after this moment, if this is the last we see of her, all right, if we don't see her like somewhere in the future or whatever, if she doesn't serve another function in this story of One Piece, I feel like her only purpose... The character of Flampe's only purpose was to set up this character moment for Katakuri. Like she's literally there to make the character of Katakuri have more depth, be a little bit more three-dimensional, which now that I think about it, I mean, that's, that's more like a plot device, really. She's more like a plot device than anything else, not really a character, which now makes sense why she was introduced so late in this arc. It's because she doesn't matter. Think about that, though. Think about Flampe's purpose in this arc. What an annoying little girl. Her only purpose was literally to mess things up. Like, she, she made us doubt Pudding's age, she interfered with the fight, and now she's making fun of Luffy and Katakuri. You know what she reminds me of? She reminds me of those very annoying fangirls that are obsessed with people like Justin Bieber in One Direction. And now that Katakuri has exposed his face, right, now you get to see how superficial she is. She's like, oh my god, Justin, you're so ugly. You look like a pelican eel. Take selfies. Take selfies. Okay, I'll admit the pelican eel comment was a little bit funny. A little bit. I love that giant panel of him yelling at her and her eyes just popping out of her face like back in Thriller Bark like it happened with Perona. It's kind of like the same thing, but the focus is on Katakuri. And like these quotes, like they're like Zoro honorable Zoro level type quotes where it's like, don't you ever offer unwanted support in a duel between two men. If you're going to laugh at this idiot, laugh at me too. Those are things that I think like Zoro would say. So it's kind of like, you know, you know, where did you grow up, Katakuri? I'm wondering, did you ever want to become a swordsman at one point in your life? He even apologizes to Luffy after this. He's like, my apologies. I should have noticed that needle. Who does that? Let's, that's epic. Kind of got me thinking that if Oda is having Katakuri behave this way, act in this way, favorable towards Luffy to a certain extent, it could be because Oda is thinking about bringing back Katakuri in a future arc, you know, using him for a future purpose, kind of like with Crocodile. I'd be down for more of Katakuri's flashback in this arc. It seems super interesting. It seems like people were afraid of him, but also made fun of him. Uh, and the setting kind of reminded me of like something that like, you know, back from like Luffy's past with like Sabo and Ace. Um, so that'd be more interesting. I think like it'd be like adding more depth to a character that is already well liked. So why not? Uh, I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see his design as as a youngster, but you know, hopefully we'll get to see more. So in this epic moment of honor amongst men who are who are dueling, who are fighting, Katakuri decides to stab himself on the side to give himself an injury to make things fair. Now, the moment I saw that panel, my mind had two thoughts. On one hand, I was like, this is just such an amazing character moment for Katakuri. The fact that he would even think about doing that just to, again, to level the playing field a little bit uh, is just amazing. And then the other part of me was like, you know, knowing the fandom, I, I know people are not going to let go of this moment. People are going to use this moment to just shoot darts or throw pebbles at Luffy when it comes to his future or his current feats. I can already hear people saying, Katakuri needed to give himself a handicap so that Luffy could beat him. And that's if he beats him, right? Uh, and also, like, Luffy used Brulee to escape the mirror world so that he could have enough stamina built up so that he could, you know, reuse Gear Force, which, by the way, he hasn't used, and we know that's coming, so. In a weird way, it's kind of like Brulee is like Luffy's healing item, 
during during the fighting game, and then like, but then like Katakuri also had help with Flampe because Flampe actually inflicts damage. So it's kind of like you know these items that you equip that make you either heal up or inflict some some minor damage here and there, even though it's not really minor because like the the attack that Flambe landed on Luffy just stopped him from dodging that that very strong blow from Katakuri. And I like how by the ending of this chapter, there's a quote by Luffy where he basically acknowledges that in a fight against pirates, there's no such thing as playing dirty. Because I feel like what that does is that not only does it kind of go back to his fights where it's like, you know, during the Doflamingo fight, Law kind of helped him out. During the Cracker fight, Nami was there with the with the water to make the, the biscuit softer. But he's basically saying, you know, I've used help in the past, you know, I used brulee to get out of this mirror world, so I'm not going to complain. If Lampe is there to help you, I'm not going to complain. He's like, no man, it's on me. Like, I should have dodged it. All right. And what that does is that it, it verbally expresses the notion that mentally Luffy was ready to take the L. Had Katakuri pulled through, I think Luffy was, was ready to take the L right there and then. But Katakuri didn't want the help. And that makes all the difference in the world. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm pushing for this fight to end in a draw with both Luffy and Katakuri on the floor completely drained. Neither of them, like, incapable of moving, pretty much. And then Luffy smiling and saying, Katakuri, mochi man, be my nakama. Okay, no, that's a little bit too much. But Oda, honestly, I feel like the, the best possible resolution, in my opinion, would be to give Luffy the draw, all right? Give, give this fight the draw, and then have Sanji achieve a feat in this arc that puts him around Jinbei level. We can pack our bags and go home. We get one of the best chapter endings that we've gotten in this arc in a while now, in which Katakuri takes off his biker jacket, looks at Luffy, and I don't know if he's using Future Sight, if he knows that Luffy's gonna use King's Hockey or whatever, but he basically just tells him, gear up, because our audience is getting annoying, it's too noisy, it's too nosy and noisy, and then Luffy says, yep, here it comes. I feel kind of stupid now for not assuming that Katakuri had King's Hockey all along, considering the fact that he's the number one sweet commander under a Yonko. You know, it's like, no duh he would have King's Hockey. But I guess it's because he's never used it before. Then again, was there ever an opportunity ever since his introduction that he could have used it where he didn't use it? I don't know. But even, even if that was the case, I would forgive it just because I feel like the execution of this moment was just so well done. It's like, they, they knock out all the fodder. Flampe is fodder level confirmed in this chapter, and this is, this is where the fun begins. This is, this is the end. This is the beginning of the end. I totally expect Luffy to go gear forth after this and then Katakuri getting a power boost to try and match that gear forth stat boost from Luffy in order to build up anticipation for the end result. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you appreciated some of the points that I made, if you thought they were fair, I would really appreciate you leaving me a thumbs up. You don't have to, but still, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already for more One Piece related reviews. And uh, comment down below. What were your thoughts about this chapter? What were your points about the fight? Thank you. Bye.